Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Joshua, Eddie Paul, Gail's in her recliner again. She'll be sleeping for a little bit. But for a little sure, bit. Sure enough, you're going to wake her up. <laughs> Just might do it. <laughs> uh, she rests night and day in her recliner what rest she can get. Because if she moves out of that recliner, she is in overwhelming pain. And we lay hands on her, pray for her. Y'all praying for her, fasting, praying for her. And all that we do, we're still waiting on the Lord to do his part. So please continue to pray for Gail. I've got my Bible. I know that those of you who follow our videos, hopefully you've got your Bible or you're gonna get it and read along with me when you watch this video later. And I know too that there are some people out there that don't have a Bible, never did. And some people sadly have a Bible, don't bother to read it. Oh my goodness. So today I'm going to be speaking from Matthew chapter 22. Again, I love the book of Matthew. I love the New Testament. And I love these stories. It seems like every time I study a story that I've known, I learn something new because this book is alive. So take your Bible. I've marked my spot. Matt, page 1330 in my Bible. <laughs> uh, King James Version, of course. And I'm going to be reading in Matthew chapter 22, and I want to read at least the first 14 verses, and I might read some more in another part of Matthew. I don't know what's going to happen when I start these uh, videos because I want the Lord to have his way. Unlike the buildings, we don't have a bulletin. We don't have an order of service. We don't plan ahead what's going to happen. We try to let God have his way. It's his word after all. So Matthew chapter 22, and I'm going to start reading in verse one out of my Bible. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding that they would and they would not come. Let me read that again. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which made a marriage for his son, and he sent his servants to call them that were bidden that had already been invited. Beloved, these people were already invited. They should have known it was coming any day now. And so this king sends his servants to tell them, come, come to the wedding that I have prepared. Listen, and they would not come. Does that sound like some of our kids? We tell them to come in the house and they don't. We tell them to go to bed and go to sleep and they don't. Well, believe it or not, that's the nature of a man. We tend to do what we want to do and put off what we don't, neglect it. But there's a price if you neglect the invitation. And I'll get into that before the message is over. Verse 4, Matthew 22 and verse 4. And all of this is written in red. So you can see it's the words of Jesus. <clears throat> when the invited guest would not come, verse 4, and again... He sent forth other servants, different ones, saying, Tell them which are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. I have done what I am prepared to do for you. All you have to do is come. I'm extending this word to you today. <laughs> Jesus said in John 15, 16, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Do you realize today that you have been chosen by God to be in his family, to be a son or a daughter? God has already chosen you. He's given you his word. 
And so today, he's sending me to you by way of internet saying, everything God is doing for you is ready. It's ready, he says. Behold, it's all ready. But look at verse 5, Matthew 22 and 5. Look at this, humans. But they made light of it. They didn't take the invitation seriously. Have you ever been invited to a real wedding and you really didn't want to go, but you went out of respect for the bride or the groom or their family? I have. I'm not fond of weddings. It's the same thing over and over again. And oftentimes the bride or the groom, one, both of them are lying because it's not love that they have for each other. It's passion. They just want to share the same bed, the same house, for a while till they get tired of it and then they go their separate ways. That's why the Bible says what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. That's the way God intended for it. But like these people in Matthew chapter 22, they made light of it and went their ways went on about doing what they were doing before they were reminded that the marriage was ready. The dinner was ready. It says here in chapter, verse 5, one went to his farm, another went to his merchandise, and the remnant, listen at this, verse 6, and the remnant took his servants, the servants of the king, and entreated them spitefully, they were mean to the servants that the king had sent. And looked at, look at this, and slew them. The people who had received an invitation to the wedding made light of the invitation. When they were reminded one last time, come, they went their separate ways, went back to doing what they were doing, and others just killed the servants. Some of you are old enough to remember, I am. I remember as a boy in the mountains of Virginia when my dad pastored in Virginia, that it was not unheard of for preachers especially to be what they called tarred and feathered. Sometimes a handful of men would grab the preacher when he did not expect it. They would pour a bucket of tar on the ground. They would roll the preacher in the tar and then dust him with chicken feathers or duck feathers or whatever feathers they had. And you know, it was quite a chore for that preacher to get that off of him. And they were trying to discourage that preacher to stop preaching, to get out of the uh, village, the valley they were in. Go away. Don't bother us. We don't want to hear it. Made light of it when the preacher would witness. And I remember that as a boy when preachers were tarred and feathered. When you read your Bible, you'll read where they were butchered with a sword skinned alive. You know that had to hurt. Can you imagine somebody tearing the flesh off of your body because you're a Christian? How many do you think would endure it? How many do you think would uh, curse God rather than go through such pain and suffering? Today, it's still happening in other parts of the world. And having been a pastor in the building, I know Today, preachers and pastors are mistreated. They're looked down upon by elders and deacons and church officials as though they are nothing. They're mistreated. They don't take care of them. They'd rather put money in their building fund than support their shepherd who feeds the sheep. I want to tell you something, some of y'all. It ain't the deacons and the elders who feed the sheep. It's the shepherd. When visitors come to the church, they don't come to hear the deacons and elders. God knows what y'all talk about outside of church. They come to hear a word of God from the shepherd. 
In my Bible, and, and I, Gail and I, we don't get an income or a wage from the church. We, You don't pay us to do what we do. But my Bible says those who preach and teach the word of God are due double honor. Honor those who are over you in Jesus Christ. But according to this story, when the king sent his servants out to bid the people to come to the marriage, <laughs> like today, they mistreated them and some of them they killed. But I want you to watch this in verse 7. It's coming. Jesus spoke of it then, and it's coming. Write it down, beloved. It's coming. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth or he was angry. Some of you think our living God never gets angry. You don't know him. I read my Bible, and there were times he would wipe out an entire city old and young, male and female, children, babies, animals, it didn't matter. He'd wipe them off the face. Look what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sodomy. There wasn't even a building left standing when he got done pouring out his anger on Sodom and Gomorrah. And I can assure you today, God is about to pour out his anger on the United States of America and remove it from among the nations. God has already shared with many, including myself, his plans for the United States. It ain't gonna get better. It'll never be what it was. Nonetheless, will it be greater than it was? No, it won't be. That man is lying. That man has deceived many. It ain't gonna happen. I want you to hear what Jesus did in the book of Matthew. And when the king heard thereof, he was angry and he sent forth his armies. I want to tell you something. Armies of people have already been crossing our borders from all over the world, coming to do the handiwork of God. Now, we're blaming it on a certain party in Washington, and that's probably true. But God is bringing people from all over the world to this nation to fight this nation and bring it to its knees. Because he's sick and tired of the willful sin in this country. And we've made it legal. We're trying to make it normal, God forbid. It's not normal. It's not godly. My Bible says that what we have made legal is an abomination to God. Meaning it makes God sick. Some of the things that people do in the United States of America and the round of the world. And you don't think he minds it? You're going to find out and God have mercy on you if you're one, two things. One, if you're participating in it or you approve it, you accept it. My Bible tells me those who accept it and approve it are going to be severely punished like those who do it. He sent forth his armies, listen, and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. New Testament, under grace. You think God's just going to be kind and sweet and loving to us till the end of days? You better wake up. You're about to see some people get spankings from God. And I want to tell you, my daddy used to tear into me lots of times. And it was terrible then. But it's harder when God gets a hold of you. He's got a hold of me a time or two. I want to tell you something. He can turn you inside out without swatting you. My Bible says that he 
destroyed the murderers and burned up their city. I relate that today. There are preachers today who are sugarcoating the gospel. They're watering down the gospel. They're tickling the ears of the people. I'm telling you, preacher, you're about to die and God's going to burn your church to the ground so that no one will come in its doors anymore. He's tired of it. He's sick of it. And you do what you do for your salary. You do what you do for your title, for the respect of men. You do it for the applause of men. You do it for the benefits that are often given to a preacher, pastor, by a congregation who don't know any better. They put their money in padded pews and chandeliers and carpets and stained glass windows instead of feeding the poor and putting the money in the people. The building is not the church. I keep saying that because some people won't listen. The building is not a church. It's the people. You want to bless the church? Yeah, bless the people, not the building. Wake up. I'll get to that in a minute. Wake up. But the king sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then, listen, saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready. <laughs> I, I don't know how to get it over to you any more than that. I'm telling you, Jesus is ready to come. He is ready. Out of his mercy and long suffering, he gives us another day so that we can get ready, so that we can take the steps to come to come to Jesus so we can be welcomed at the wedding supper of the Lamb. You've been invited. Now, whether you get there is up to you. He's done his part. Everything is ready. The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden, those which were invited are not worthy. Have I not said so many times what the Bible says? Jesus said, if a man is not willing to deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, Jesus said, that man is not worthy of me. If you can't say no to yourself, if you can't deny yourself, if you can't just simply take a step of faith and obey the Lord, Jesus said it, not Eddie Paul. Jesus says it, you're not worthy. And since we're at the end of time, the last days, if you haven't taken that step of faith by now, guess what? He's going to choose somebody else to fill your shoes. Doesn't the Bible warn us to be careful lest somebody else get our reward? Do you want somebody today to get your crown, your reward? reward? Do you want somebody else to live in your house that Jesus prepared for you, but you've made light of it? You've made light of the invitation. You've made light of the warnings from the preachers, the prophets, the watchmen on the wall. You've made light of it. And you've gone on about your business, continue your job, plowing your garden, adding a room to your house, going in debt for a new car, new truck, You've gone about doing what you want to do and not deny yourself and do what Jesus wants you to do. Those who were invited were not worthy. So here's what G the king says to his servants, Matthew 22 and 9. Go ye therefore into the highways internet, street preachers like Patrick in Georgia got the courage to go out into the streets, hold up his Bible and preach 
Some of you won't even testify at Walmart. You won't share the gospel at the bank or the post office. And Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you when you stand before my Father. Do you want Jesus to be silent when you stand before God in judgment? Or do you want Jesus to say, wait a minute, Father. He believed on me. I shed my blood for him. I paid for his sins. He's okay. Let him in. Or are you going to be among the many and God looks at you and says, depart from me into outer iniquity for I never knew you. I'm telling you today, the wedding is ready. So the king told his servants to go out on the highways, listen, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. In other words, this king said, go get whoever you can. In verse 10, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. Listen to this. Jesus said this, folks, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going out there and putting his hand on bad people and changing them and bringing them into the wedding when those who've gone to church all their life, those who can quote scripture, those who've given their money to the churches, those who've sang in the choir, taught Sunday school, helped clean the church, you've done this for years and you have denied yourself a place in heaven because you won't come and do the bidding of God and come to Jesus with all you got. You only give him so much of your time. And I'll tell you, as a pastor, I can tell you how many times on church Sunday where people would go to the beach, go to the mountains because the weather was nice. How many times they didn't come to church because it was cold or raining or a light powder of snow. What has always amazed me as a pastor is how many people will stay out of church because there's a light snow on the ground, but they'll get up the next day and plow to work because they get paid. And then you say you love the Lord. No, you like him. You don't love him. Right. So they went out and invited both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Now listen. I got a couple of more verses. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, wow, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? You're not dressed for it. You don't have on a robe of righteousness. You don't have a crown of life. And the man was speechless. He didn't have an answer. Some of you might get to St. Peter's Gate, as we've always said. He ain't gonna let you in. You don't want to wait till then to find out. Trust me. You don't want to stand before the Lord on that day and be denied entry. I'm coming to that. Then said the king in verse 13 to the servants, listen to somebody who got in who wasn't supposed to be there. Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's only one place ever in the Bible that's described as outer darkness, weeping and gnashing, and that is a place called hell. I'm, listen to me. This man who made it into the wedding feast no doubt had been mingling with the other ones who had been invited and he thought he would tag along. How many of you think you're going to go to heaven because your mom and dad was a Christian? You think you're going to heaven because you had a praying grandmother? I had a praying grandmother. 
My dad was a pastor. My mama was a pastor's wife. I was born in church, raised in church, been in church all my life. But I didn't get to know Jesus in church. He came to my house and I met him at home. It wasn't in the building that I got to know Jesus. Sadly, today, so many people go to the building. They go down to the altar. They tell the pastor, I want to be a Christian. I confess Jesus. They shake their hand, get the church to vote, join, join the church, get baptized next Sunday, and they say, that's it. That's it. You're going to heaven. No, you're not. It takes more than that to be a Christian. It takes all you got. And you don't have to be a member of a building. You have to be a member of the body of Christ. Not a building, not a denomination. Isn't it funny though, if you really think about it, the whole voting in someone to be a part of the church. If you are a part of the church, you're going to heaven. But that decision is made up by Christ, not by the people who are in the church. So it's like, it's kind of hilarious. It's also like, what authority do you stand on to say whether or not you accept me because when I get to heaven, I ain't going to stand before you and you're going to tell me whether or not I get to come in. I'm going to stand in before Jesus. Amen. Because here's the truth. If you are in Christ, hear me. I'm going to say it again. If you are in Christ, you are the church. It's not a building. People around you don't vote whether or not you are in Christ. You're not elected. I'm telling you today, the wedding is ready. Jesus is ready to come. Are you willing to lay it down, whatever it is that's distracting you from being all you can be for Jesus? Are you ready to deny yourself finally one last time before he goes out in the highways and hedges and compels the blind, the lame, the halt to fill his dining room with guests for the marriage supper of the Lamb, the Son of God. There will be no vacant seats there. And as this man somehow mingled with the believers, the guests, and somehow got in, he didn't get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. If you think you're going in the clouds when the trump of God sounds, you're not going to get away with it. You will be filtered out. Because the king had that person removed and thrown into a place of outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you think for one minute that you're going to mingle with church folk and make your way to heaven, you're on your way to hell. Hello? <laughs> you don't want to wake up in hell someday thinking you were going to go to heaven. It'll be too late to repent then. It'll be too late to say, God, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. There is no mercy in hell. <laughs> there is no mercy after death. There's coming a day that the ark of safety called Jesus Christ, that door of grace, that door of mercy is about to close. And either you are or you are not in Christ ready. Let me share with you, if I may, Matthew chapter 22, no, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, so that I don't have to, let me hold it up here, I've got it in my, my notes, so I won't have to look it up, and I can see it better, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, to sum up what I've said today. This talks about the five wise and five foolish virgins. Jesus said it. Matthew 25 and verse 3, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And I want to just put my words in there. They didn't take a refill. 
Some people go to the altar one time. Some people go to church one time. You know, there's a lot of people who go to church on Easter and Christmas, pagan holidays. That's the only time you see them. Some people only go to church for weddings and funerals. I had an uncle like that. He never went to church. I don't think he went to church for weddings. I'm not sure he ever went to a funeral. And he died. I don't think he made heaven his home. But these foolish virgins, the Bible says, took no oil with them. You got to get a refill. If not daily, weekly. But periodically, saying of God, we leak. We get angry. We get mad. And we need to renew our minds with the word of God. We leak. But the wise in verse 4 took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The five wise virgins took some refilled oil with them. Some of you, your light's about to go out and you don't have a refill. You better come to Jesus before the trump of God sounds. And those who are ready will go and those who are not will not go. I'm coming to that. Verse five, while the bridegroom tarried, they all, wise and foolish, slumbered and slept. And at midnight, when you would least expect it, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. While they were sleeping, I'm telling you, much of the church today is sleeping and the cry is already going out. Wake up, wake up. The wedding is ready. Jesus is ready. Jesus is coming. Are you ready to meet him? Is your lamp trimmed? Is your oil filled? Is your light burning? And I want to tell you something, some of y'all. Your light can't go out if it was not burning. You can't fall out of a tree if you weren't in the tree. I've had people say, well, Brother Eddie, their lights was not burning. Yes, it was because their light went out. But they all, and at midnight, he called, go ye out to meet him. Listen, verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Meaning they had been burning. Have you not read in the book of Revelation where Jesus said, I would that thou art cold or hot, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Lukewarm Christians ain't going to heaven. You say, well, Brother Eddie, do you believe a Christian can be lukewarm? I sure do. It's the most easiest thing in the world to do. Doesn't the Bible tell us that we need to return to our first love? In other words, we need to go back to where we loved him first and ourselves and family second, third, and fourth. Somehow or another, he tends to lose first place in our battles and struggles of life. Who am I talking to today? You know who I'm talking to. I'm willing to bet they go to church too. But you don't feel the presence of God anymore. You know in your heart you're not right with God. And he loves you enough today to give you this message. The supper is ready. Come. Come. Before the door shuts. The foolish asked the wise to give us oil for their lamps, but the wise answered in verse 9, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, the five wise 
virgin says, we can't do it for you. You've got to do it for yourself. You can't go to heaven because grandma was a prayer warrior. You can't go to heaven because your mom and dad served in church. You can't even go to heaven because you have served in the buildings they call the church. You can be in the building and still not be in Christ. So many are. But the wise virgins told the foolish, go buy for yourselves. Go get what you need. Listen to this in verse 10. It's the word of God, y'all. It's the word of God. I didn't make this up. He said, and they went to buy. They were trying to get ready. The bridegroom came while they were getting ready. They weren't ready. They were getting ready. And the bridegroom came while they were getting ready, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. I'm telling you, whether you want to believe it or not, if you're not ready when he comes, you're not going. You can't repent when you hear the trump of God sound. I'm telling you, if you hear the trump of God, it's too late. Only those who are ready will go into the marriage for the Lamb. Now look at this in Matthew 25 and 11. Afterward, after the bridegroom came, after the five wise virgins went on their way, the foolish virgins went and bought some oil, Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. In other words, they went and bought oil after the midnight cry was given. They trimmed their lamps. They lit their lamps. They had their lamps burning. They showed up at the wedding and said, let us in. Look at this, verse 12. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. As in Matthew 22, verse 14, many are called, but few are chosen. Do you realize that you have been invited you have gotten an invitation to come to Christ and you've made light of it. You've talked foolishly about the preachers, the prophets, the church, the Bible. You've made light of it. You're about to be cast into a lake of fire that will never die. You're about to be separated from the presence of God. All you will hear for all eternity is the screams. You won't see the people, but I believe you will hear their screams for mercy, but there will be no mercy. No. I'd like to read on as I know. Quickly. Because I think this backs up that point and gives a little bit more clarification. It says in verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them an, another five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained the other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And I know most of y'all remember that from church, but it's like the person who hid their one is the five foolish virgins. You know, you often hear faith without works is dead. And you see the, the, the people who got, the dude who got the five talents, the dude who got the two talents, with their faith, they did works not because they were required to, but because they loved their master enough to multiply his money. And so that when he came back, he was proud of them. But the guy who was like, I can't let this go out, was selfish. And when the master came back, was disappointed in him. So not only is five foolish virgins, you know, you went to church once, thought you were good. And when Jesus came back, he's like, um, in fact, you are not good. And then you come back to literally just continue to read. You realize what it is, is that God is saying that not only did you have to hear of me and fall in love with me, but you had to 
multiply what I gave you. Faith, the Bible says, without works is dead. If you say that you believe in God and don't do anything to glorify God, you're lying. It ain't so. But I'll say it one more time. The marriage supper is ready. God has put it on the hearts of preachers all around the world saying, come, come, come before it's too late. You will not get in if you don't meet the requirements of the king. Not your church, not your denomination, but you will meet the requirements of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, or you will not enter in to the portals of glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you're talking to folks today. Lord, you're shaking their tree, hoping they'll let go of the things of the world, the things of life, family, job, friends, whatever it is, Lord, they're holding on to that's keeping them from coming out of their world into your world and do the works of God that men may look upon the works and glorify God. As I read a moment ago, many are called, but few pass the test. Few do what is expected of them. Few truly deny themselves, take up their cross, and obey the Lord. Father, thank you for your extended mercy today. Otherwise, many of us would already be in hell. But because of your love and grace and mercy and patience, we're still here trying to win others to Christ. And Lord, I pray that you'll add your blessing to your word today and win people to Christ, that they'll be willing to let go of this world and grab hold of the world to come. As the Bible says, there is no other name but the name of Jesus wherein a man might be saved. Lord, may people around the world today hear the name of Jesus. Jesus is the king. Jesus is the Lord of lords. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. It's Jesus or no other. For Father, I know of a surety if they deny the name of Jesus, they have denied their ability to go to heaven. If they don't go by Jesus, they ain't going. So Father, I pray today that you will speak to the hearts of men and women, boys and girls, that today they will see the light, they will repent, they'll trim their lamps, add oil, light their lamps, so that their fire will be burning when the trumpet of God is sounded. The dead in Christ shall rise first, the Bible says. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the clouds. So Father, today, your will be done in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray today that you will save the lost, heal the sick. Father, that you will cast out devils. Lord, I pray that you'd set people free from demon oppression and from demon possession. Set them free in Jesus' name. For the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray today that you will continue to pour out your Spirit on all flesh, red and yellow, black and white. They are all precious in your sight, male and female, and there is no other. Father, today, your will be done in Jesus' name.
You need a Bible? Want a Bible? Cannot get a Bible? Antonio and Laura will provide you a Bible. No charge. But you have to do something. You have to email them and give them your name and mailing address and they'll see that you get a Bible. Again, no cost to you. Antonio and Laura, that's their gift to God, providing Bibles to the people who watch these videos. Only one Bible per address. You can't get one for everybody in your Bible study. You cannot get one for everybody in your family. Sorry. You get one Bible per address. All you got to do is go to I got my Bible at gmail.com and give Laura your name and address. There's only three Bibles available. King James, King James Giant Print, and a Spanish Bible. So you got to let Laura know which one you want. The regular, King James, or, Sp uh, or Giant Print, or the Spanish Bible. And Laura will get it out to you. Don't forget, our videos are now on Rumble. If you know somebody who watches Rumble, then our videos are listed under my email address, Ed Flowers. That's it. E-D-D-F-L-O-W-E-R-S on Rumble. And you can get our videos. And one of my viewers said there were fewer commercials So I encourage you, if you want to, go to Rumble and look up Ed Flowers. Or you can stay right here on YouTube for Eddie Paul Flowers. That's me. And continue watching our videos. And I want to tell you something. Thank you. I noticed thank you to 118 people who shared last week's video. Thank you. And God bless you more that you're willing not only to watch our videos, but you're willing to share our videos with somebody else so that the gospel can go into all the world. For the Bible says when it does, the end it happens. It, the end comes when the gospel is preached into all the world. So a special thank you to those of you today who have shared our videos. The week before, I think it was 111. The week before, I think it was 99. I want to tell you something. I pay attention. My old age, I pay attention. I read your comments. If I don't feel like your comments pertain to this video, I will delete it. Some people try to put their names on there two, three, four times so they'll get their name up there. I delete it. Or they try to do a short Bible study. I delete it. Some even try to preach a little bit on our video comments, and I delete it. So if you go back to our videos and your comment has been deleted, I'm the one who done it. I did it. He's proud of it, too. <laughs> well, after all, it's our video. And it's like the king said to the wedding when a man came in without the garment, he had him removed. So the comments are supposed to be testimonies, or something in conjunction with this video. Don't ask me questions. Don't get into a theological debate with me on there. I will delete it. I've got a personal private email address. It's under the video in the description box. You ought to know it by now. Edflowers at AOL.com if you want to talk to me. And those people who get ugly to me, not only do I delete it, I block it. You're not going to smack me upside the head because we disagree. If you don't like something I said, that's fine. But don't get in the comment box and start trying to beat me up because of something I did or didn't say. I will delete it and I will block you so you can never leave another comment. You want to fuss at me? Go to edflowers at AOL.com. I might read it. I might read it. You got something to say quickly? Uh, I was just going to add just like a personal example of what it is to to do works in a faith. It's like, because some people, they, they, they fail to understand. Because I've had many arguments with people who are like, you need to practice the law because, you know, we're still under. It's like Jesus fulfilled it, which means that when I follow him, the works that I do are not to share in the completion of the law. It is to give, you know, 
just sort of like a blessing to him. Thank you. I love you so much. And the personal example I wanted to give was the other day I made you uh, fajitas. You didn't ask me to do it. You didn't know I was doing it. You were on a phone call. And I ate it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I didn't do a good job. But <laughs> he, he keeps on talking all the time. It's like, I wish I had a cook in the house who would give me a home cook meal because I'm tired of eating out. And so I thought, well, you like Mexicans, so I'll cook you fajitas. I went to the grocery store, got two peppers, cooked them fajitas. And he said, thank you. So it's like, I did that because I loved him. He didn't ask me. So faith without works, meaning if you love God, you'll do stuff for him because you love him, not because... He's demanding it of you, not because the Bible says you have to, but because you love him. You That's the to. example I wanted to give. Yeah, you want to do it. Yeah. When you have Jesus Christ in your heart, your heart changes. You want to do less for yourself and more for him, for his name's sake and for his glory. Don't forget to continue to pray for Gail. We do everything we can do, lay hands on her, give her medicine the doctor prescribes, uh, let her rest in her recliner 24 hours a day, which has got to be terrible, but we don't know what else to do. So, Please continue to pray for Gail, and we will continue to pray for you. So until next week, Lord willing. Oh, by the way, tomorrow is the first day of March. Wow, time is flying. 2024. Didn't know I'd live so long. So until next week, it'll be in March. Now, Freddie Paul, Joshua Paul, and Cindy Gale. We yeah. love you guys. We and thank Wayne you. And Wayne Nederhoff Jr. Yeah, that yet, yet, yet bearded man from Johnson County, North Carolina. Rebecca's husband. We love him so much. Um, we pray for you guys every day. We thank you for your short letters, your cards, because you can't write a whole lot in a card. <laughs> but we thank you for your cards. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your support that helps us to do what we do. The other day, I believe I checked, and so far we're up to 343 families, families, 343 in Pakistan that we've given a month's wage to, to help the persecuted families there, not to mention the orphanage, the homeless, the people in need, the churches in the Philippines, our street preacher in Georgia. We're constantly giving, but so are you, and I just want to say <laughs> thank you for helping me to do what I do for the glory of God. So until next week, God bless, love you.